that you didn't expect me to come from there. How's it? And welcome back to another video. Today we are going to be doing a live painting. I'm going to be showing you a bit of a behind the scenes uh, and how I create these characters. But before we do that, I just want to thank everyone for all the love and support I've received from the previous two videos. I just want to say one negative comment that I received was that I frowned too much during my videos. And I just want to say, I will never stop. I will never stop frown going for life. So before we get to this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Smash whatever you want to smash. And if you don't do these things, I'll be writing your name in this book. And we all know what happens to people whose name I write in this book. I was not insinuating death. Please do not demonetize me, Susan. Anyways, let's get right into this video. The first thing we're going to need are some brushes. Without this, you're not painting anything. Secondly, the paint. Next, you need a palette. Very important. Next up, the power of the mystical Buddha. A fail lap. And then next up, I need this blue stuff, which I get from Spa. This is not sponsored, Spa. Please sponsor me. This is delicious. I need it in my life. Please help. And finally, some hairspray. This is my favorite brand. I use it to fix my paintings. I only use this one because this is what my Oma used to use. So, yeah. Okay, let's get started. So, I wanted to paint on the easel, but it was wobbling too much. So, I had to double-sided tape this painting to the wall, which will be a problem for the landlord uh, quite soon. Now that the painting has finally been stuck to the wall, I can actually start. So with this specific painting, I started with the background. This is not something that I usually do, but with this painting, I didn't really have an idea of what I wanted to paint. So I was hoping that during the background process, I would come up with an idea. Finally, the background was done. So I started sketching out what I thought was a character. Um, I didn't really have an idea of what I was going to paint, but uh, I just surrendered the magic to see kind of what would happen. Yeesh, kind of looks like a diglet. After I finish my outline, I have to try and imagine what perspective I'm painting in. Great, I'm creating another diglet. I start doing contour lines to try and imagine what this painting is going to look like. And if you're wondering why I'm using white paint to do it, it's just preference. It's the easiest paint uh, color to paint over with in any other color. Okay, now it's starting to look like something. Um, I was unsure at this point what the second character was going to be. Uh, I kind of wanted it to be something looking over the shoulder of the main subject. Um, so yeah, but at this point I kind of thought that his teeth looked quite goofy. Finally I start to add some color to the painting. Uh, black is my favorite color I would say. And I think it's looking quite sharp at this point. Nice. I gave this other character a white shirt to kind of create this duality, this contrast. So, yeah, that's what's happening at this point. Finally, I'm adding some crimson red to the entrance of this little mouthpiece. So, if you've ever seen any of my other paintings, you'll realize that I always make this little room with this little black character inside of it. Now, this is kind of my signature without making a signature, but what, that, what it does symbolize is myself as the artist viewing the person viewing my painting. So there's, there's got this double relation where you aren't just consuming me, I'm also consuming you. So that's just, just a little bit of flavor. So it was around this point that I kind of hated this painting. Um, nothing felt good to me. Uh, I just didn't like it at all at this point, which I'm sure most artists can relate to. 
But uh, I just kept going. Most of the times you just have to trust the process. Something magical will happen eventually. Um, I've been frustrated many times before and some of those paintings were my favorite paintings. Oh, the screen is so disgusting. It's so bright. Uh, it's over dominating. I don't know why I added it at this point. I was kind of hoping to get some color into the painting, but I think it looks trash. So naturally, I try to paint over it and try and get it a bit lighter. Uh, I'm quite happy with how it came out though. It's a bit uh, more diluted, but I think it works. This new Kendrick Lamar slaps. So now I start to paint myself as a character. As I mentioned before, the point of this little black character is to create this illusion and to create this dichotomy that I am looking at the viewer as much as they are looking at me. <laughs> I kind of messed up the teeth so I had to paint it black to try and revisit it a bit later. At this point I kind of had an idea where this painting was going. I had some shading done, but I was still unhappy overall. I wasn't sure if it had to have an outline or what the X factor would be about this painting. For those of you who are wondering, this little extra piece of wood I have on the side is literally just to clean my brush. It's got no other purpose. Sometimes when I'm bored waiting for my painting to dry, I'll just paint another additional painting. But this is not the case with this with a specific one. So eventually I did decide to do the outline. Uh, I wasn't sure what it was going to look like on this painting, but I was willing to give it a try because I was quite unhappy with where the painting was going overall. To me at this point, the painting felt a bit too flat and I kind of wanted it to have a bit more three-dimensionality. So again, I wasn't liking where the painting was going at this point. Now this is the exact moment when I actually started liking my painting. I decided to use more aggressive strokes uh, and to contrast the colors much darker. So I started taking black and just coloring in certain sections so it almost gave this burnt antique feel to the painting i just stopped thinking about it uh, i think the moment when you stop thinking about uh, if it's going to fail or not is when you most of the time succeed i really really liked where it was going i know it looks a bit strange at this point but um, overall i think the feel of it became much more alive and yeah i think sometimes you shouldn't be scared to try something new it's paint you can paint over if it doesn't work out just be bold enough to start making bold strokes and bright ideas I just wanted to show you guys a close-up because I didn't think that from far away it really did justice to the painting and I don't think digitally it does either but um, yeah I was really excited at this point I think things were going my way at this moment. Yes, now it's no longer looking like a diglet. I think that the painting is starting to work. Um, I don't think it's complete yet, but I think it started working out properly. Uh, so it just proves don't be scared of rash decisions. Rash decision, rash. Oh my goodness. Don't be scared to make 
rash decisions when you're painting because I think most of the time it will re be rewarding and my dog is barking right now during my voiceover. <laughs> and that's pretty much what the painting ended up looking like. Um, I'm really, really happy with what it came out as. I don't think it's done yet. I probably will revisit this painting a few more times over the next couple of weeks. But uh, for now, I think that's, that's quite cool actually. And that's pretty much me for today. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, show some love. And uh, I'll see you in the next one. Scoop de poop. Scoop tiddy. Poop. <laughs>